<clears throat> for the would-be pendejas. <laughs> One, parted thighs like two sides of a valley. How could, how I forgot something once lived in between. There was once an insatiable thirst for every drop of you. Not knowing how to love the hollow parts of me, craving anything, even if it was not fit for this body, for this soul, for this woman. In the thoughts crossing my mind in the silence of your absence, I realize empty spaces need not always be filled. Two, nausea overcomes me as I remember how much was adored by women before me, just for me to spit in their faces, reducing their struggle to give value to the disintegrated feminine mystique, to make sure his wandering eyes found repose on the slithering of my body. Depression is a selfish motherfucker, making every burned bra, every set rally for sexual freedom, every fight for equality, every word bell hooks, Patricia Smith, a shout out to the core, and my mother uttered another sickening feast for a patriarchal juggernaut. Three. If that nigga told you he was fucking you, your friend, and the next bitch, there is, without a shadow of a doubt, an overwhelming conclusion that you are acting like a pendeja. <laughs> you should be offended. Fuck that. Your pussy should be offended. That your lack of integrity had the audacity to put to shame all the work you put into her. She didn't get that tight, that wet, that talented for nothing. Four. How dare you? My great-grandmother glowers at me as she watches from above all the pieces of me strewn across my bed. How dare you disrespect yourself? I did not teach you how to move your hips for this. She is sad, angry, and disappointed that I had to be royally screwed, ignored, left broken in the middle of my room, condoms littering the floor, my dignity, love, integrity, the things I thought I stood for, to finally understand that my mother did not raise me to play second fiddle to anyone. Five, queens who act like slaves walk the cities of the streets, I joined their ranks. Tarnishing my crown with every lie, every night he was allowed to reduce me to a peasant, a lovely piece of rubbish. Today, I go shopping. Sparkling tiara, flowing white dress, flowers in my hair, diamond encrusted sandals, brand new self esteem. Um, so, I write in my book a little bit about being an art model. I was an art model for a couple of years. I started working at the colleges and the universities. Um, here in New York in 2008 and I stopped being an art model the beginning of last year yeah wow three years um and I only I, I write about it really like briefly and like in relation to all the other things that I talk about in my book and as I was as I had finished writing it, my book, and I started to like really do a lot of the deep like healing and reconstructive work on myself after realizing all this, how self-destructive I've been being, I realized that I don't talk a lot about being an art model, and that's like a really that just as important of a piece of me talking about my relationships with other people as it is my relationship with myself and my self-worth. So art modeling is super interesting. Not only, like, if you think about it, you're in an art class, you have your easel and your canvas, and you're ready, and somebody walks in and they take their robe off, and they're completely naked, and you paint them. Like, to an art student, that's normal. But to, like, for most people, we don't think that there's actually someone who's getting paid to do that, and that that's a human being without, with, like, other things in their life. So, I definitely don't regret it. I definitely had a lot of interesting experiences and was able to see the art world from that point of view. And it always just made me laugh because the proctors and the people that were responsible for me, they had to make sure that I had tea and water and I was like, I wasn't hot. I'm like, this is awesome. So sometimes I was like, I can't be treated like royalty. But something someone told me was like, you know, the, the more you take off, the less you have to show. Like, 
being in your my, my, my barest form meant I can hide because the attention was off of me as a person and I could be just an object, which is something I had gotten so used to. And so I also did, I've also done new, phot new photography. And I mentioned some of this one because it's not something that we talk about or like we think about, that people actually hold these jobs and what are some of the experiences that that looks like. And two, I, I have like this overwhelming fear that one day those pictures are gonna show up. <laughs> So you heard it from me if they do. <laughs> I don't think that and that it will. But I'm just like, let me just put that out there so that if it happens when I'm famous or ever get famous or important in some way, shape, or form in the world, y'all know. <laughs>